rebooted Com Norfolk Community Forum. My name is Kevin Kalkin. I am the chair of the Norfolk Select Board. And I am so happy to bring back this tool that we were using to be able to get information out to the community related to our boards, committees, and town hall practices. So uh, we'd like to take the opportunity to welcome everybody back and also to welcome my new partner in crime, Justin Casanova Davis, the town administrator for the town of Norfolk. Welcome, Justin. Welcome. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, so Justin did join us just over, what, a year and a half ago, just about? Yeah, just a little over a year ago. And how are things been going up until this point? It's been fantastic. I really enjoy uh, working in this community. There's a lot of great people here, a lot of talent within uh, the organization, but the residents have been very welcoming and a lot of work to do. As well. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, you know, I did want to just kind of highlight that, you know, as part of the Select Board's uh, communication initiatives for this year, we had outlined a couple of different projects and things we were working on to help get more information out to the community. And this show represents a big part of that, that we're going to be doing monthly moving forward to be able to cover things that have been going on previously in town. We're going to be bringing in representatives from our town departments, other school committee members or board and committee members, and as well as talking about things that are coming down the pike that are of interest for the community. So with that being said, let's jump right into it. Justin, uh, we just had a big tri-county vote. Can you tell us a little bit about what happened and what we're looking at moving forward? Sure. Um, on October 24th, uh, the 11 communities that send students to Tri-County, uh, there was an election and they determined uh, uh, on October, October 24th to build a new school. Uh, so as part of the next step is now for the town to determine how we're going to pay for that uh, project. Uh, so we will have discussions with the select board as well as the advisory committee to come up with potential solutions on how to pay for this uh, project. Um, recently, the MSBA did uh, provide some additional funding for the project, uh, but there still are significant costs for the town. Uh, and so, uh, one of the things that we've done is work proactively to put an article on the uh, on the warrant for town meeting this year uh, to fund a stabilization uh, of fund for the funding of the Tri-County School Project, amongst uh, another discussion item, potentially doing a debt exclusion to pay for the project, um, because the operational costs of this project, which are, are proposed to be about $500,000, we cannot fund that within our operating budget. So that'll be part of our discussion with the advisory committee and the select board and the community to determine what are the next steps with that project. Fantastic. And, you know, there are 11 communities that are part of that Tri-County District. And I can tell you in engaging with select board members from each of those towns, everybody is going through that same kind of discussion right now about how they're going to be able to bridge the gap between, you know, the confirmation of the building of a new building and now how we're going to be able to fund it. And, you know, you had mentioned that Norfolk's responsibility with the enrollment that we're currently experiencing at Tri-County is going to be around $520,000 a year, which is a big chunk of money for a town that operates with a $45 million or so budget. Uh, but there are other communities who are dealing with a much larger um, weight that they're looking to accommodate for some of them over 1.4, 1.5, one even at $3 million a year. So uh, this is something that's going on in every community and absolutely look forward to being able to bring forward a plan to the rest of the town. Yep. Uh, the next thing we wanted to highlight was the progress on our fire station. Obviously, we get to see new occurrences every day with it coming up. But uh, what do you have for us in terms of where we are right now? Yeah, uh, this is an exciting project. Uh, you know, obviously, everyone gets to see the progress that we're making with the fire station. Um, as of our last fire station building committee meeting, which was uh, 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 back in October, uh, the project is about 21.5 percent complete. Um, it looks substantially more than that when you look from outside. Um, but there's a lot of work that's being done. The roofing is being installed. The slabs have been poured. The second floor is complete. Um, there's just a great amount of work being done. But most importantly, with the fire station project, every month our fire station building committee still continues to meet. We meet the second Wednesday of each month where we get an update from our project manager uh, from the fire station building committee. Uh, where we go through progress photos, percentage completion, challenges or issues that we're facing. Um, uh, and as well, on our town website, under the Fire Station Building Committee uh, link uh, on the website, there's pro uh, progress photos of the work being done, as well as all the presentations that we um, uh, address in our Fire Station Building Committee meetings. Yeah, and you know, I don't think that we can really talk about the state, the status of the Fire Station Building without really highlighting the incredible work that the building committee has put into the project from back to front all the way from you know bringing everybody together through picking our contractors to providing updates and doing community feedback sessions and even now once we're past the heavy lift of getting it through a town meeting you know continuing to have recurring meetings and keeping the community updated as to the progress i mean it's just 
I, what I believe is going to be the template for how we handle building projects moving forward. So kudos to the uh, fire station building committee, to the chair and everybody involved on what has been incredible up until this point. Uh, what about some recent town hall events, Justin? Yep. Uh, so recently in town hall, we've, um, I'm really proud to announce that we had launched a pilot of an e-newsletter that sort of coincides with what uh, Kevin uh, had mentioned was part of our goals and ambitions. We want to reach out to the public in new ways and different ways that we haven't done before. So we issued an e-newsletter. Uh, it's on our website. We've heard some good feedback about it. Uh, so we're going to we're gonna try another issue. And then in the next couple of months, we'll definitely put another issue out there. And, and we hope people are finding this um, a good resource uh, for information. Um, the town has been undergoing work with MAPC, which is our consultant regarding the town's master plan. This is a really exciting project. You know, it's really important to provide direction for which uh, where the town's going to be going the next 10, 20, and so on years in the future. Um, so as part of that next phase, uh, there was a recent, there's been recent uh, community meetings, but right now on the MAPC website for Norfolk, uh, they've list, uh, they've outlined a draft set of goals. Um, and those goals are on that website for residents to take a look at them and give us feedback. Uh, there's a link there to provide feedback via email and phone and online. Uh, so we encourage uh, residents to take a look at that um, that that project there. Uh, also, in terms of other community meetings uh, and issues going in town, uh, the town recently held a Southwood Hospital a development site meeting. Uh, it was well attended, uh, where MAPC, once again, are consultant on this project as well, uh, outlined some scenarios for the town to consider with the Southwood development site. Um, so this, there's a follow-up survey on the town's website to discuss viable development options. We encourage residents to take part in that and share their opinion on the options uh, that were presented at that, at that meeting. Yeah, I mean, just to quickly touch on the master plan as well, um, we've had an incredible amount of community engagement, which is critical to these processes because you need to be able to have that input to help drive direction for some of the goals that we're outlining, some of the prioritization we're putting into place. Um, over a thousand people in town filled out the online survey going into the first stage of this process. So we're seeing a great amount of engagement from the community, but we do need to keep that up as we go along, right? right. Once we have our goals laid out, we need to get some reviews in place. We need to prioritize those goals. And that's going to be an important step of making this core reference document for the town to use moving forward 5, 10, 15, 20 years uh, and how we grow. Um, so really look forward to continued engagement from the community there as well as with the Southwood site. I mean, we've been talking about Southwood for the better part of 15 years here in Norfolk, and I know that it's not going to be going away anytime soon, but it does represent our largest redevelopment opportunity here in town. Right. Um, so that's why it garners so much appreciation, so much attention from the community. Um, and again, the engagement is going to be important in being able to craft what's going to come out of that process as a whole. Um, what about some topics of interest? I know that we've had a flurry of select board meetings over the course of the last few weeks. Um, anything that you wanted to kind of pick out as an important thing to point out in this uh, forum? Yes, definitely one thing that, you know, I think we've heard from, actually one of the things I heard as soon as I came to Norfolk was a lot of residents asked uh, me about whether the town had a community choice aggregation program, which essentially allows uh, municipalities to aggregate their electricity load. And for a, a majority of time, uh, it tends to reduce costs for consumers. Uh, the town uh, did have a town meeting vote where they authorized us to pursue that effort. And I'm proud to announce with the select board's leadership and with our partners, we, we, we got a, uh, a community choice aggregation consultant to help us with that work. So we're undergoing that process currently. Uh, we presented our draft community, uh, community aggregation plan on our town's website for uh, residents to take a look at that. This process will probably take about a year. However, we're working with our consultant and we're um, working to come up with a plan that provides uh, residents the opportunity to, to hopefully have electricity uh, at a reduced cost and, um, and be of benefit to residents. At a time when energy costs are such a big focus for households in our district, it's absolutely critical. So thank you. Correct. Um, we also have a little bit of a fall town meeting coming up soon yeah. with a few things that we want to talk about with the community. Uh, did you want to kind of just set the table for what's coming down the pike? Correct. Yeah. Um, so... Town meeting uh, in uh, next week on Tuesday. Um, high level, typically what the town has done at this uh, special town meeting is uh, fund capital projects. So we will we have a list of capital projects that we're looking at funding. Uh, high level, just we're looking at replacing the fire engine two uh, uh, 
ladder. We're providing technology replacement at Norfolk Public Schools, uh, as well as purchasing new DPW equipment, along with a new high-speed scanner for our town clerk. Uh, so hopefully we can make the election processing time for our residents a little bit quicker. Um, we've also uh, we've also got several uh, articles to establish some stabilization funds, which include the opioid stabilization fund to allow us to um, expend uh, opioid remediation funds that we've received, as well as the Tri-County project that we discussed earlier, um, as well as a, a, a capital uh, stabilization fund for large-scale capital projects uh, moving forward in the future. So it's part of our overall planning for the future and um, being responsible and prudent with the town's finances. Absolutely. And I just want to touch on one uh, big one there, the opioid remediation articles. This is going to give us the ability to be able to disperse the funds that we receive from the state as part of that settlement agreement into organizations that can put it towards actionable initiatives to be able to reduce the instances of overdose in our community. So I'm very much looking forward to being able to put that money to good use and to be able to support some of these fantastic organizations like SAFE and our public safety departments and whatnot. Um, and Gilly's house uh, to be able to really put that money to work. So very much looking forward to that passing as well. Great. So Justin, as we talk about Fall Town Meeting and the articles that are going to be presented to the community, we also have two articles that are being sponsored by our Norfolk School Committee. And to that end, we'd love to welcome Medora Champagne, the chair of the Norfolk School Committee. Thank you so much, Medora, for joining us. It's absolutely my pleasure to be here. Uh, so we do have these two articles coming up. Would you like to um, offer a little bit of insight to the community? Certainly. Um, sure. So the school committee has been working for a number of years on addressing uh, enrollment issues in the local school district. And as part of that process uh, in 2022, funds were appropriated at town meeting for a feasibility study to um, study expanding Freeman Kennedy School. This fall, um, in an effort to fully study all options to remediate the issues that we're currently having and we forecast for the future. We have a warrant article we're submitting to expand the scope of that feasibility study to explore some additional options, you know, over and beyond uh, a brick and mortar expansion at Freeman Kennedy. Um, and in addition, we have a warrant article seeking to establish a building committee, um, not unlike what the fire station um, has had for the past several years, to really bring this forward as more of a um, town issue as opposed to just a school's issue so that uh, we have more individuals at the table who are stakeholders in the process and who can help guide the, the process, um, whatever solution we ultimately choose to move forward with. Fantastic. Madura, in your introduction, you mentioned that the, t uh, the school committee has really been working on this issue for some years. Could you just elaborate a bit on that? How long have you actually been looking at this, studying the, the enrollment issues and so forth? Certainly. So the school committee has been looking at it uh, longer than I have. <laughs> um, the, uh, the first um, real tangible study um, operations happened in 2017. So that was a year prior to my um, initial term on school committee um, at the fall town meeting that year, which I think technically happened in December. Um, so my timeline is wrong when it says November. Um, uh, funds were appropriated for a building study um, at a very high level. Um, Freeman was built as part of the model school program through MSBA. Um, it's a relatively new structure. Um, the goal was to ascertain whether expansion of that actual structure was possible and what that might look like and how it might solve the long-term needs of the district um, at that point. Uh, contemporaneous with that, the school committee commissioned uh, enrollment projection studies through NESDEC, which is a nonprofit organization that focuses on helping uh, school districts guide um, their kind of future development and uh, react to issues with enrollment and administration. Um, in 2018, um, an architect was hired to undertake that study. Um, in 2018, the initial enrollment projections were also completed. Um, and in late 2018, in around October, November, a uh, presentation was made to the community and the select board um, as far as the results of that initial study, which indicated that expanding Freeman was possible um, and likely would create uh, a long-term solution to an uh, overcrowding situation in the local schools. Um, Subsequently, in 2019, additional enrollment studies were uh, commissioned just to make sure that uh, things were trending in the direction that we assumed that they would be as a committee. Um, and then in um, 2019, again, there were some discussions before the select board about what a possible outcome and a solution would look like. Uh, throughout this whole process, uh, the committee 
and school district, we're also submitting uh, grant applications for participation in MSBA grant funding um, programs. I think three rounds of grant applications have been had been submitted when in 2022 we came before the town um, seeking funding for a full feasibility study to study expanding FK. So that was in the, uh, pardon me as I check my notes, uh, spring of, yeah, there we go, spring of 2021. Um, no, 2022. Um, spring of 2022, there was a uh, overwhelming support at Springtown meeting to um, appropriate, I think it was $225,000 towards a full feasibility study of expanding Freeman Kennedy School. Subsequently, that project went out to bid. The building subcommittee of the school committee um, interviewed, I think, six different uh, architectural firms that applied to participate in that study and ultimately retained uh, AI3. And we now have undertaken a full feasibility study. We know what a building expansion at Freeman Kennedy would look like. Um, and we want to make sure that all other avenues are being pursued as well at this point with the updated warrant articles. Thank you. Uh, so you, you did mention the 2022 feasibility study. I did just correct my incorrectly okay. noted 2021. Um, but what else did we get out of that study? What did that study specifically point to in terms of actionable information that we can use to plan forward for this project? Uh, well, so that study um, gave us a tremendous amount of information and it uh, is over 200 pages long if you'd like to do some light reading on the weekends. <laughs> um, but to distill it down into you know what it really means for the district, um, confirmed that uh, there is an overcrowding situation happening at the H. Hall of Day School, that um, Freeman can both um, withstand is the wrong word, but easily accommodate, I guess, an expansion um, that was designed to do that, and that having an expansion um, placed at Freeman would allow us to access both that building's administration to kind of uh, mitigate costs of administrating a, a third site, if that was um, another option, and would allow us to tie into all of the infrastructure that already exists at the Freeman location, so septic, electric, fire suppression, all of those things. Um, as far as the nuts and bolts of what's needed, um, the Total um, estimate of square footage is around 36,000 square feet to create a permanent long-term solution to overcrowding at both school locations that we currently have. Um, that would allow us to add, I think, reclaim essentially at H. Olive Day School, uh, eight kindergarten classrooms, seven first grade classrooms, and nine second grade classrooms, which would help mitigate the overcrowding there and then would add sufficient educational and support space at Freeman to see the increased enrollment and and uh, student growth move as it inexorably will from HOD to Freeman. So it would create a, a long-term sustainable solution at, at both sites. That's perfect, thank you. What are, what are some of the new data that we will receive as part of this expanded feasibility study that we're proposing this article? And how could it potentially you know, alter the scope of the project? Sure, certainly. So um, contemporaneous with expanding the feasibility, uh, we would like to, again, go through an enrollment um, projection study to see where things are trending. Um, historically, looking at the data that we've gotten from NESDEC, um, who has done our enrollment projections in the past, they are very much on point with the number of students that are uh, in Norfolk who would be eligible to be educated in the public school system um, within you know, a few students here or there. Um, what we have seen during the course of the pandemic, however, and in the few years kind of following a return to normal, is an increase in the number of families that are placing their children in private education placements and homeschooling. So our hope is that we will be able to see if that is a trend that will continue. Um, or if it is something that is sort of course correcting back to pre-pandemic levels so that we can better understand where the students will be and kind of what grade level they would be at within the school system. Um, in addition, it will help us understand what the um, costs and benefits would be of potential alternative solutions. Um, we had a space study committee in 2017 that looked at both modular classrooms and possible third sites in town to erect essentially an early education program. Um, I think at this point, the option we'd be really looking at exploring would be whether or not modular classroom facilities would be an option that would both solve the long-term problems of the district and then also potentially um, see some cost savings in association therewith. So those are kind of the two real nuggets of information we're looking for. Thank you. 
And then, you know, that, that really takes a big piece of the explanation behind the first article. The second article is going to seek to commission a building committee. Can you talk to us a little bit about what the vision looks like for the makeup of that committee? Certainly. I mean, some of the vision is driven by the town's bylaws, so um, we are certainly beholden to that. So I believe um, a few positions are already kind of spoken for, is my understanding. I know um, we, I've had some discussions with Dr. Alardi, and I know she's spoken to Justin about that. So it would be um, much like the fire station. There would be representatives um, from the school, the school committee. Um, I believe Justin would have the honor of serving on yet another it's building committee. <laughs> exactly. Um, and possibly someone from the building department at town, is that accurate? Um, and then in addition to that, it would be uh, made up of an additional, I think, three to four members um, from the community at large who expressed interest and have some sort of, you know, kind of personal, professional training or background that would lend themselves to the task at hand. So um, obviously uh, building experience, so architects, engineers, um, anyone with some significant project management experience or past experience serving on uh, a building committee, not to put too fine a point on it, um, <laughs> would be um, you know certainly welcome. And I think that, as I mentioned earlier, the goal is really to, um, this has been something the school committee has been focused on for a number of years, is to bring it forward as what it you know truly is, which is an issue for the community, um, you know, both with respect to students in the community and their families and caregivers, but also individuals who may not have a direct connection to the school at this point, but will be part of the process of, you know, determining what the outcome is and, and how that's funded. So it's only fair to bring it forward kind of community as a whole and have everyone involved. Absolutely, thank you. So is there anything else that you'd like to share uh, to prepare the community or to provide some insight into the background behind these articles? Um, I think we've covered a great deal. I know my historical analysis of where we have been ate up quite a bit of time, so I <laughs> will try not to eat up any more. But uh, I think it's just uh, really important to point out that you know this, this is a larger community issue. And um, while I have been thinking and considering it, thinking about it and considering it for a number of years, you know, not everyone has, and there's been a lot of change in Norfolk over the past, you know, five years and during the course of the pandemic with building and, you know, people moving in and, and kind of the demographics of town changing. So I think it's just important to make sure everyone is aware of, you know, what the needs of the school are and, and what it is we're looking to do, but also um, how they can get involved and, and participate. So coming to town meeting is always, a great first step and I, I hope to see everyone there. Absolutely. Well, I do know that in my, I think it was second meeting on the select board in 2018, I heard a presentation on the need to be able to expand to accommodate for space concerns. And I'm pretty sure that I've heard about it every year since. Um, so I know you've heard about it a lot from me. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I did just want to really completely and accurately identify how much we appreciate all the work that you and the rest of the school committee and the school administration has done to try to stay ahead of this problem that we've seen coming for a long time mm -hmm. and all the information that you share with the community to be able to set us up to appropriately consider uh, the next steps moving forward. So thank you so much to you Absolutely. and everybody else who's serving in those volunteer roles. Really appreciate it. Yeah, no, we're all, um, I won't say happy to do it, but more than willing to <laughs> give our time and energy into it. And I, I certainly appreciate everyone listening and, and trying to educate themselves about the situation that we're in. Thank you so much, Medora. All right. My pleasure. Thank you, Medora. All right. So, Justin, you know, the holiday season doesn't offer any shortage of things to do or to note that are coming up. But we do have a few things that we want to point out for the community um, that are going to be coming up in the next couple of weeks, right? Yes. Um, so, obviously, we are going to promote Fall Town Meeting, which is on November 14th at 7 p.m. Just want to let all the residents know that the advisory committee and select board have taken up all these articles. We reviewed them. Uh, their, the videos are on our partner's NCTV uh, YouTube page, so residents can take a look uh, there to hear you know, about some of the articles that will be at Fall Town Meeting um, next Tuesday, um, as well as one of uh, many community events that I've attended that I really enjoy is the Lion Santa Parade. It's going to be on December 3rd uh, at 3 p.m., uh, and that will be associated with the tree lighting as well. So that's a great little community event that I really love uh, personally. Um, I think that's a great event. Absolutely. And while we're on the subject of the lions, you know, every year one of everybody's favorite events here in town is when the lions start selling their Christmas trees over by Dunkin' Donuts over there. And this year will not be any different. On November 18th, the organization will start doing their sales. Um, I believe they're going to be running Monday through Friday from 3 p.m. until 9 p.m. And then on the weekend, Saturday and Sunday from 9 a.m., until 9 p.m. So if you are one of those people who loves to get a tree nice and early, <laughs> November 18th, that'll open up. But uh, we will only be open until they are gone. Once they are gone, they are gone. 
It typically happens sometime around the second or third week of December. Additionally, we've had some great football success here in the area over the course of the last few weeks. Uh, primarily, our high school team is doing very well, rumbling through the first couple of rounds of the playoffs, but they will be playing their rivalry game up at Fenway this year. Uh, so that should be a lot of fun to go do. That game is going to be on November 21st at 7.30 p.m. That's going to be versus Franklin. Uh, the tickets are $20 each, and they're available via the Red Sox website, or you can also access it through the King Philip football website. In addition, some of our smaller football players have found some success this year. Our sixth grade King Philip Chiefs team just advanced to the Super Bowl for the area. They're going to be playing against undefeated Easton this coming Sunday, and that is going to be on November 12th at 12 noon over at Franklin High School. So this Sunday, 12 noon, Franklin High School, the sixth grade boys will be playing for the Super Bowl That's against awesome. Easton. So we hope to get a lot of the community out there to cheer them on. Well, I think that does it for everything that we had today. Justin, thank you so much again for coming and sharing with the community. I think this is going to be a great help for people who are looking to get up to speed ahead of Fall Town Meeting and the other things going on this holiday season. I do also want to thank everybody here at NCTV for everything that they do to help us get this information out. So Andrew and Karen, thank you so much for joining us today to help us get this done. And we look forward to bringing this to you again for our next episode in December. So until then, we'll see everybody at Fall Town Meeting. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.